Alan Todd for G66. Welcome to another Tuesday Tone Tip. On today's video, I want to talk about some of my favorite tips and tricks when I'm running an FRFR speaker rig with my Fractal. I'm using the FM3 today, and this is the MF10 made by Red Sound. This is the G66 edition. These come in an active passive pair. So you have a main powered speaker and then a passive speaker that can piggyback off it. So you've got a really great compact stereo FRFR. I've been using this together with my main in-ears rig for electric gigs, but I've also been using it as a small and compact PA doing acoustic gigs, which I think sounds fantastic. These use a 10 inch speaker with a one inch tweeter inside the main 10 inch speaker enclosure. So you've got a really compact, light and punchy tone out of these monitors. What I wanna do is show you very quickly how I set up my FM3 from the front panel to use it direct to PA and separately to a pair of stereo FRFRs. Often when we're running FRFRs live, we want a separate feed to PA or to our FRFR. And this is really easy to set up from the front panel. Hit setup, and then we can navigate to the IO menu here. Hit enter, then I use the right nav button to skip through these menus until we get to output two on the FM3. The FM9, you can use output three, and the Axe FX3, you can use output three or four as well. So what we wanna play around with is to come down to output two copy. We can set this either to none, or we can set it to mirror input number one. This is great in a studio style setup where you want your own clean DI, but for this, we wanna set it to output number one. So whatever is coming out of output number one, our PA feed will also go to our stereo FRFRs. We can then play around with things like the phase, the output level. I set it to plus four when I'm using stereo FRFRs like the MF10. We can also play around with the mode. Again, we're using stereo FRFRs, so let's leave it there. And I also set the output type to line level with the MF10s. Another great tip is to use the global EQs just to control the frequency response of your FRFR. So let's go to global settings and we can select a global output EQ for output one and output two separately. We can have graphic or parametric EQs. Personally, I don't use the global EQs on output one, but if I set it to graphic, you can see I've got a 10 band EQ in here that I can play around with all of the bands as well as the overall level. Alternatively, if like me, you like parametric EQ, you can set up a parametric EQ to do this. So you've got a global five band parametric to tune your FRFR speakers. That is of course all accessible from FM3 Edit as well. Simply navigate to the top right up here where you can go to the config page to set up your EQs and then you can go to the audio page to set up your output to copy and mode over here. What I wanna show really quickly before we talk about this output to EQ is I use a parametric EQ in all my main patches to take out excessive low end and high end as well as making a few surgical cuts. You can watch the specific Tuesday tone tip that really goes into depth on this, but I'll give you an example of this with the parametric EQ on and then bypass. <laughs> Now, if you're not listening at super high volumes, that's gonna seem like an odd choice. It's gonna sound very dull, but at really high SPLs, that is gonna focus the guitar sound and essentially sweeten it up and put it right where it needs to be in a live band mix. I also use a multi-band compressor for heavy tones. Again, I've talked about that on separate Tuesday tone tips. One other trick that I like just to add a little bit of liveliness to the sound, especially if you're not used to using a full range speaker is to go to the cab block and use a little bit of this room level parameter in here. So I'm gonna set that to 30%. Let's hear it bypassed and then kicked in. <laughs> So it's just adding a little bit of depth and space to the sound in there. Of course, if you're using stereo FRFRs live, try 
add some really awesome widening effects on there. You can use the enhancer block in here right at the end of your chain. Uh, I like this stereoizer with the width turned up a little bit. Let's have a listen to what that does. <laughs> Now again, that is quite subtle, but if you're in the room with your speakers far apart, that sounds pretty awesome. I personally really love using some pitch detune, like nine cents either side for an old school even tied style thing. This sounds colossal when you use it live. <laughs> Awesome, right? And then I make use of things like the multi tap delay, where I can have stereo chorus and delay from one block, which again sounds massive when you've got your two FRFR speakers nice and far apart. <laughs> So much of playing well at a gig to me is being happy with your guitar sound and having your FRFRs, you know, really nice and loud, coupling acoustically with the guitar and just giving you a tone that you're happy with. I think you're going to have a much better gig. What we should talk about, of course, is this output to EQ. Now, if I'm playing really, really loud with this and playing with a loud drummer, which I often am, and I'm sure we've all been in that situation, I like to set the lowest frequency to around 120, 150 hertz, and the highest to around 4,500 hertz. And then, I mean, what you can do is you can actually take these parameters here and map them to the perform page. So you can have instant access to them. So I might take these in here and you can see they're labeled global frequency one. I might call this like FRFR low and then FRFR high on here. And then that way, if I'm performing, I've got instant access to these high and low shelf filters on here. I'm pretty OCD with my capitalization. So I'm going to make sure that's a capital L there. But again, if you're listening at low volumes, this is going to sound like maybe the guitar sounds become a little bit too dull. But what I like to do here is to go into this global EQ and I'll pull out maybe say three to six dB from 120. That's maybe a little bit too much there and 4,500. And especially for playing leads, this is just such a lovely sound live. It takes all the harshness out of it and it just makes your guitar really bloom. <laughs> Again, the great thing is that you can control your overall volume using this output to control on your FM3, FM9, or Axe FX3. And you can make yourself super happy with your onstage sound, but output one isn't being affected by this global EQ here or the level on there. So your sound guy's not gonna shout at you. What I would love to hear though is from all of you, what tips and tricks have you picked up along the way when you're using stereo FRFRs live? And if you've tried the MF10s, let me know your opinion in the comment section below. Uh, for something so light, they really pack a massive punch and I really should do a comparison in the room when I can get some lovely room mics in here between something like a 4x12 and these MF10s. I might do that on my personal channel, which you can follow. It's linked in the video description below. You can get my personal cabinet IR and my blocks. They're linked in the video description as well. I really hope you have a fantastic week. Try out some of these tips and I will see you all next week for another Tuesday Tone Tip. Thanks so much for watching.